It's safe to say that Elementor has changed the WordPress page builder landscape in its pretty short lifespan. And while I love what it offers, it's not perfect. In this video, I want to talk about some of the features that I would personally love to see in future updates, how I'd like to see Elementor develop and touch upon some of the things that really do frustrate me about it. This video is certainly not to moan about Elementor or the developers behind it, but rather take a critical look at the current version and what that brings with it, or more to the point, what I think is missing or could be improved upon. Now, before I dive in, what I'd love you to do is to tell me in the comments section below what would make your perfect Elementor and what frustrates you the most about Elementor right now. So let's start off with a massive change that I just don't see happening, but would have loved to have seen Elementor being originally developed in this direction to provide a more flexible structure and reduce some of that potential bloat that we become accustomed to. Create a version called Elementor Core that contains the core functionality of Elementor Pro. Things like theme styles, global fonts and colors, dynamic tags, layout features, etc. But separating the non-essential widgets from Elementor Core and then connect those via their API in a much the same way that third-party developers do to extend Elementor right now. Now, why I think this would have been a really exciting way of making Elementor Pro a great tool is that it would allow for easy extensibility of the core functionality and make it much simpler to disable unused widgets in the same way that many third-party plugins do right now. This would help lighten the load times, reduce the bloat, and allow us to easily pick and choose the tools that we need for any given project. Now, while I very much doubt that something like this would ever happen, it is way too far into the development to go back and start over with a completely different architecture. I think it would have provided an awesome framework to create a more modular version of Elementor and help with those teething problems as the platform has grown and expanded. Now that I've had the time to fully test the newly updated global colors and fonts, along with the more unified design tools included in the theme styles options, I can't help but feel that the next logical step is to have widget presets. For example, let's say you have applied global styling to a particular button and then made some widget level changes to it. The only way you can currently apply that new styling is to go through the hassle of right clicking the original design, copying it, and then pasting the style one at a time to your future design elements. How much better would it be to simply be able to create a new widget style in the same way that you can create global styling and theme styles? That would make things really quick. Now I know you can make global widgets, but that still feels just a little bit too clunky and I'd much rather have the option to simply choose the widget and have an easy way to save or create a global widget preset style that I can apply quickly to my widgets and have them change globally if I update that master widget styling. Style kits, when they work right, are an amazing time saver and something that has helped us as designers to speed up and globalize and centralize our workflow. I'd love to see that expanded to allow us to create multiple kits per site and then apply them on a page or template level. Let me give you just a quick example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're building an e-commerce type website for a client and part of that site is that you want to provide a simple front-end dashboard for the client to manage all their products. This isn't a section that has to have brand consistency like the customer's account sections. So as a designer, I'd like to build a different, more utilitarian design with different fonts, colors, headers and footers, and all manner of different styling. Right now, with the way in which style kits work, we can't do that without overriding the global styles on a widget or design-based level. Making it possible to totally disable one style kit in favor of another on the page level, like we can with the various page templates, would make this really useful and super powerful. Now, following on from the widget presets, I'd love to see a single option on each page or template to reset the styles on that page and also an option to reset styles across the entire site. At present, moving from a 2.x design over to a 3.x design and the new unified global design tools means that any widget with its own styling will retain that styling and to remove it, you need to select each widget and choose the right click option to reset the style. This is a complete nightmare and an absolute time suck for designers. Now, could you imagine having a site with hundreds of pages and then having to go through and reset every single widget to be able to pick up your new global styles and theme styles? You spend just as much time doing that as you would building the site from scratch all over again. 
Now I know this isn't such an issue with theme or template files as they are potentially being used globally, but it is still a total nightmare scenario. In my opinion, if you introduce global styling that the intended purpose is to streamline and centralize your design process, you need a quick and realistic way of resetting existing styles and applying that new style to your site without a huge level of manual interaction. Now, how counterintuitive does it feel to have to manually edit values for margins and padding on a given section or widget? If you take a look at Divi, Brizzy, or even Oxygen Builder, they all have well-integrated draggable margins and padding tools. Yes, I know there are some third-party add-on tools for the Elementor that add this type of functionality, but let's be honest, this is my perfect Elementor, so you're gonna have to humor me on this one. Now, while this feature doesn't sound like anything that's that important or ground-changing, just imagine how much time you would save over a year of building and editing sites where you just want to roughly eyeball the spacing without having to go to manually type in values until you get what you're looking for. Now tell me that wouldn't provide both not an inconsiderable amount of time, but make the design process much more organic and visual by its very nature. Surely that's a logical addition to the core design feature set on offer inside Elemental right now. Right, now we need to talk a little bit about dynamic conditions and conditional logic. Now, if you do any kind of design work with Elemental on tools like Advanced Custom Fields, you'll know that while you can create amazing designs, there are just times where some data is optional and the need for only displaying sections of content if the value isn't empty is very, very real. Now, why would you leave out any type of conditional logic to manage that regular eventuality? To me and to many others based upon the feedback that I get, it's a very real requirement for our professional work. Now, I know there are some great free plugins out there that fill that gap, but this is a justification that I just hear way too often. We shouldn't need to patch the holes in Elementor's core with third-party tools, free or otherwise, that make core design functions usable in the real world. Plus, it means it's a yet another plugin that needs to be updated and maintained and can fail when Elementor releases an update, something that many Elementor users know all too well and have a very real fear of. Even a very basic form of dynamic conditions is incredibly important, and just not included in that is a real pain point for me and for many others. Take a look at one of the most popular free plugins to handle this type of things, Dynamic Conditions, links in the description, and you'll see that it only includes a very small selection of options, but they open up a huge amount of flexibility with dynamic content. If Elementor doesn't want to have to spend the time developing this functionality, well, why not just go and buy this plugin and include it in the core features? Then it's just job done. I've been testing the new Bricks Builder out a lot recently, and one of the things that has impressed me, amongst many others I might add, is the ease in which you can add in any type of dynamic data to your normal written content. For example, if you want to personalize a block of text, you can simply drop in a relevant dynamic shortcode where you want that data to be displayed, and boom, your custom text is inserted. This sort of technique will be very familiar to you if you ever use any kind of email marketing tools like MailerLite or MailChimp and add in all types of different personalization to your emails. Now, for anyone who's seen any of my videos on dynamic content using Elementor, you can't help but notice that I use Elementor custom skin an awful lot to create custom WordPress loops. And while I absolutely love the plugin, I would much rather see that functionality baked directly into Elementor. Sure, we have a couple of designs to choose from with the Elementor post widget, and we can refine those designs with a ton of options, but we can't include one of the most important things, and that's our own custom data into that loop. We can only enable and disable a range of predefined options. That means when you combine Elementor Pro with something like Pods or ACF, you simply can't add any of your custom meta fields to your post or product loops. Yet again, this hampers the ability to get as creative as you absolutely need to when building more advanced websites, especially listing type websites with WordPress and Elementor. And again, I know that we can employ all manner of amazing plugins to expand beyond the core functionality of Elementor Pro, and that is in itself an amazing feature. But it doesn't change the fact that tools like this, for most users, are way more important than things like lotty animations, text on a path, and loads of other features that have been prioritized to offer a wow factor over the tools and features that many, many paying clients want and need to fulfill their daily design duties. 
If you want to see some great tools for building custom post loops, check out this video next. It's going to give you some great options. Finally, I'll add the obligatory honorable mention of additional breakpoints to make testing designs on both landscape and portrait devices. But let's be honest here, everyone already knows this is another must have feature that's been overlooked in favor of bells and whistles for far too long. Anyway, enough of my moaning about the missing features. What are your must have missing features in Elemental? And what would you absolutely love to see added in to make your perfect version of Elemental? Let me know in the comment section and hopefully someone over at Elemental HQ will read, listen, and maybe even take on board some of our suggestions and build us the perfect page builder for WordPress. Now, as always, all the applicable links for everything covered are in the description below. And if you've enjoyed the video and got value from it, hit that thumbs up button. But if you didn't get value, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. Until next time, take care.